Hey guys, welcome back to Theodro Tech. At some point you may have wondered how long should a hard drive last? So there's two main ways to measure the lifespan of a device or a component. And the first one is called MTBF, mean time between failure. Now what this is basically is when you take a whole bunch of some device and you run them for a long time and see how long it takes for them to start to fail. So say you have a hundred hard drives and you run them for one hour and one of them fails. That means that the average MP MTBF would be 100 hours. So you can use this to extrapolate into huge amounts of time even though you don't have that much time to measure it, but you're doing this by using a whole bunch of devices instead of a lot of time. Now the second measurement which you probably more see in hard drives is the annualized failure rate. And this is just how many percentage of hard drives you would expect to fail in one year per year. So now to get a bunch of data, there's actually one company called Backblaze that does online backup. And because they use so many different hard drives, they actually conduct studies. They're well known for these studies where they show the reliability of all these different brands of hard drives they use and they publish it every quarter, I think. So one study they did found that 80% of hard drives live past four years and then past six years, only 50% survive that long. So if your hard drive is six years old or more, you probably need to get a new one. You're, you're on a 50-50 chance here. They also found that there are three distinct phases of hard drive failure. The first year, the next 1.5 years after that, and then the rest of the time. So the first year, there's actually a 5.1% failure per year. That's the annualized failure rate that we were talking about. Then the next 1.5 years after that, it's 1.4% per year. So the first year is there's more failures than the next 1.5 years. So if you can get past that first year, you're pretty good for the next 1.5 years. Your hard drive probably won't fail. But after that, when you're at the three year plus range, then it shoots up to 11.8% failure per year. So that's why it's so important to back up your data. If your hard drive is more than three years old, which let's be honest, most of us keep the, our computers longer than that, then you're more than a one in 10 chance that hard drive is just gonna die each year. So you really wanna back it up. There's no reason to not back up because your hard drive is going to fail. It's just gonna be a matter of are you ready for it? And of course, this company studies different brands reliability. The ones they studied were Seagate, Western Digital and HGST slash Hitachi. It's the same thing. They got bought out. So they found that Seagate had the highest failure rate followed by Western Digital and then HGST had the lowest failure rate and that actually influenced me to buy HGST hard drives when I got my new computer and I have not had any problems at all. Now of course these weren't necessarily scientific studies they were just using their own data. You know, to be a proper scientific study, it would have to be double blind, there would have to be a lot more control into it, but it's still, you know, it's pretty good at least to get an idea of the reliability of these drives. Now we're assuming that you're gonna be using these hard drives, but you might think, well, if the hard drive's just sitting on a shelf, then it can't break, can it? Well, actually, hard drives just sitting on a shelf are not safe either. So if you're thinking of just archiving stuff for years and years and years, it's probably not best to use a hard drive. There are things like environmental factors that are going to influence how long the hard drive lives, such as any magnetic interference. You can also have mechanical failures. If you don't boot up the drive, the physical motor might die after a few years. And then, of course, magnetic breakdown. Permanent magnets have been shown to lose about 1% strength in the magnetic field per year. So you might not lose 1% data, but the sectors are gonna become weaker and weaker. And after a few years, you know, some of those might lose completely the data, but it's still something to consider because adding on to the other factors like changing temperatures, you know, you could probably lose data, you know, if a hard drive is just sitting there three to five years or so. Now SSDs have a reputation of being more reliable and understandably is because they have no moving parts. And the good thing about SSDs is, yeah, they're not gonna have any mechanical failures. However, the thing about SSDs is that you can only write to them a certain amount. So if you write to a certain sector a certain number of times, it'll just stop working. Now, you don't really have to worry about that too much because the, 
the software in the drive will recognize that sector and then not write to it anymore and it'll rewrite to other sectors. So there's some protection against that. And there's actually been tests done that, you know, consumer grade good SSDs can survive writing of upwards around a thousand terabytes before they really start to fail. So unless you plan on filling up and deleting your terabyte SSD a thousand times, you probably don't have to worry about that. But of course you still need to back up because SSDs have been known to fail. There are defects, there are you know, anomalies that might break the drive. You still gotta back it up because it's not bomb proof. And I know you're probably thinking, well surely SSDs, they can't fail mechanically. Surely an SSD must have a great shelf life. Nope, SSDs have a terrible shelf life actually. Believe it or not, most SSDs are gonna fail within a year probably if you just sit it on a shelf with no power and that's because flash memory requires power to store the data. It's not magnetic, it uses you know NAND technology which does require power to sustain that data. And some drives might last less than three months with zero power. So you know, you, you need to keep power in the SSDs or else you might start to lose some data. Definitely not good for long-term storage. So now we arrive at the question, what is the best mode of long-term storage for a lot of data? The first main one is optical data. Discs, you know, the old school. Blu-ray, you know, we don't really know how long these last, but accelerated aging tests suggests that Blu-ray discs could survive 30 plus years, but we don't really know that. We're not totally sure because, you know, accelerated aging doesn't really tell us the whole story. However, a disc specifically designed for long time archival storage may last upwards of 50 years or more. Sony and Panasonic are actually developing a new technology called archival disc, which is gonna be based on Blu-ray technology and they want to have a roadmap where these discs are going to be able to store a whole terabyte on one disc within, you know, a few generations of this disc type. So that's really promising, but right now, you know, discs aren't that practical if you have to store a lot of data. They can really only store about 25 gigabytes, 50 gigabytes. So if you're storing terabytes of data, like if you're a film studio and you have to back everything up, you know, that's not gonna be practical. There are some people who have to back up a terabyte a week. And so a disk is not gonna be great for that. So if you have to store a ton of data for a long time, the best way to do it right now is magnetic tapes. That's right, tapes. Magnetic tapes are actually one of the most common ways to archive a lot of data. There are these tapes called LTO, Linear Tape Open, tapes which can store 2.5 terabytes or 6.25 terabytes compressed on one tape. Best thing is these tapes cost less than $50 and they're really small. And for archiving they're specifically designed to last 30 years on a shelf as long as humidity and temperature is controlled. So you might be thinking why don't we use this for everything if they're so great? Well. The tapes are inexpensive, but the drives to read and write to them are not. They cost thousands of dollars. But if you are storing so much data, then you know it's gonna be practical to buy one of these tapes drives up front and then not have to spend a lot on the tapes themselves. And also you have to write to these sequentially. So it'd be good for backup, but it's not that great for reading and writing random data. So you wouldn't really be able to use this just for your computer because the tape would have to scroll through to access some file that's you know written all the way over on the tape. So it's not that practical for just random usage. Fun fact, Amazon Glacier is a service that uses archival tapes for storage. They advertise cheap storage because basically they put your data on these tapes and then they get stored on a shelf for its computerized shelf where ARM picks it up and reads it. So basically it takes a really long time to retrieve the data, but it's really cheap to store. But anyway, yeah, that's pretty much all I know and probably more than you need to know about storage of any type of data, long-term or short-term hard drives, SSDs. So if you guys found this interesting, you can give it a thumbs up and leave a comment because I'm interested in what you guys have to say. We can continue this conversation down below. That's what the comment section is for.
You can check out some other videos on the right hand side. If you're on a phone, you can click the same link in the description. And if you're new around here, feel free to subscribe. I try to make new videos three times a week and I like to talk about interesting stuff that you guys want to hear about. So as usual, thanks for watching guys and have a good one.